Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixel Perfect, and today we're gonna learn how to work with mockups in Photoshop. So, what are mockups? Have you ever given a mock test? Remember back in school when you used to give mock tests? What are mock tests? Mock tests are just like real tests, except for the fact that they are not real. So why do we give mock tests? We give mock tests so that we can see how the questions will actually show up in a real examination. So we can say that mock tests are templates for real tests. Similarly, mockups are templates to see how your design or image will exactly look if printed as a business card, a billboard, a mug, a magazine, a t-shirt, or even as a Facebook cover photo. So first of all, let's start with where can we download free mockups? Now there are tons of resources and I will list all of them down in the description if you want to check them out. However, my favorite one is freepick.com. So this is freepick.com and you can look for free mockups here as well. They do sell premium mockups, but most of them are usually free. So all you have to do, just simply type in mockup or you can choose mockups, but I will type in mock up and search them and there are tons of mockups that you can search from for example this you can just click on them and you can modify them in any way you want i'm going to download one for you so that you can see how it's downloaded and how we can open the file for example this is the mockup that i like and i'll just click on it and i'll click on free download you can also pay them to license it but i'm going to download it for free there's also a premium license option if you are interested and by the way, Freepik didn't pay me to say this. It's actually my favorite. So all you have to do, just click on free download and it automatically downloads that for you. And if your download doesn't start automatically, you know what to do, click here, all right? So let's save it somewhere. I will save it in mockups and downloads. So street poster mockup, let's name something, test here so that we know that this is the one that we are working with and let's save it. Now, more often than not, mockup files will be provided in a zip format. Now, you might need a software like 7-Zip to unzip them. And by the way, 7-Zip is a free open source software. You can download it. Check the links in the description. All right. So if I just go to the folder, let's show in folder. See, this is a zipped folder. Now, once you install 7-Zip, and if you already have it installed, awesome. Right click on it, 7-Zip, and then extract here or extract to whatever the name of the folder is. Just click on it and it will extract that and that folder shows up. Test street poster mockup design, just double click on it and you have the PSD file. So that's how to download a mockup. Now let's jump into the examples and see how to use them. When you download a mockup and open up the PSD, it looks something like this. Now it usually indicates where you can change the design. In this case, this is the blank notebook and we can change the design in this. So how can we change the design? It's simple. You don't have to do any of the blending or matching. It's all done given. So have a look. It already shows you place your design here. And usually in all of the mockups, most of the mockups, you will have this indication. All right. So all you have to do, double click on the thumbnail. They are smart objects. They will open up in another document. Double click on the thumbnail. And you have to replace this with your design. Very obvious. So you can open up anything that you like, but I'm going to open up file, open some of the, I have something, maybe this. I'll just open that up. Now this is completely white with a transparent background. So what you can do, you can just drag it and drop it over here. Now the background is white and that's why you cannot see it. So you can change the background by creating a solid color adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose solid color. I'm going to choose CD201F, hit OK, and you can control the size of this one by pressing Control or Command T. And just, I'm holding the Shift and Alt together to make it smaller or larger from the center in proportions. All right, so this is fine. I'm going to leave it at that. And once you're satisfied with this position and the size, press Enter or Return and save it. Press Ctrl or Command S to save it or simply go to File and then click on Save. Now once you save it, this will update and have a look. You did not have to do any of the blending. And by the way, while we are here, one another way of importing the design is this. All right, so let's go ahead and delete this. Go to File, all right, and then Place Embedded. And then you can choose the same thing, Place, and it does the same thing. It's much more convenient for me. 
and hit enter. The same thing, all right? So once you save that, it automatically updates over here. Now, here's an interesting thing. Some mockups come with filters. <coughs> Some mockups come with filters and adjustments that you can make. And this is no exception. Have a look. You have this image filters. Let's open up the group. You can turn them on if you want to. You have light, you have faded filter, you have contrast. You can choose whatever suits you best, whatever looks to you best. All right. So I personally like the contrast and I also like the light. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to apply the light and the contrast together. You can just mix and match as well. And you can control the opacity. Maybe you don't want so much of a contrast. So I'm going to go ahead and apply probably 41 and light, not so much light. So just a little bit, you can just mix and match it and have a look. It gives you tons of customization options. So if you want the coffee cup to be on the top of the book, you can do that as well. So choose the cup and then you can move it the way you want. Isn't this amazing? Just like this or maybe like this. This is totally amazing. Maybe you want to move it over here. So it's completely under your control. Maybe you want to move the pen or remove the pen. So if you want to move the pen, you can just remove the pen. And if you want to move it, whoops, select the pen and then you can move it the way you want it. Maybe you want to rotate it just like this a little bit. Yeah. And it looks great. So totally customizable, easy. Now let's move to example number two and check out a reflecting surface. Have a look, as you can see in the glass, it has a reflection and you don't have to do a thing. It's simple as well, but stay tuned for example number three, where you have to make some changes. All right, so let's have a look at this. All you have to do, it already shows you edit this. So you already have that indication. Just double click on the thumbnail and then you can replace it with whatever you want. So I'm gonna just create a solid color adjustment, let totally black, okay. Just turn it off. I'm not going to delete it. You can delete it if you want to create a new layer, probably add some text, maybe keep creating, keep. All right. So this is black. We're going to make it white. Okay. And change the font to railway. And by the way, guys, railway is one of my favorite fonts. One of my favorites, not my favorite. All right. So we're going to choose extra bold. That is fine. Let's make it big. Place it here and make a copy of this by holding the Alt or Option and drag it and drop it. And I'm going to type creating C-R-E-A, right? Just C-R-E-A and make a copy of this one again. Ting, just a fun stuff, right? So I'm doing this very quickly. You can select all of them and center it. So when you select all of them, press Control or Command A and you want to align them to the center, right? So click on this one. This aligns them to the center vertically. All right, now you can change the color. Probably I'll choose create and ting and go to the T, click on the T and double click here and change color of both to FFCC. No, not yellow. Let's go for CD201F. All right, hit OK. And you have them. Let's save it. File, save. And have a look at this. The reflection will be clearly rendered. So it looks totally realistic. Now, if you want, you can also place your logo at the bottom by going to file and then going to place embedded, locate where your logo is. I'm going to go ahead and click on this PSD. Keep in mind, this is a PSD so that I can make changes place. Okay. So I can simply place it over here just like this and hit enter. If in case I want to make some changes again, I'll just double click on the thumbnail. It will open up the PSD and I can change the text. Probably I'll remove the Photoshop and Lightroom and the tutorials and bring Piximperfect in the center of the logo. So I'm going to bring it over here and save it. Control or Command S and have a look. It refreshed over here and then save this one. Press Control or Command S and have a look. It just is made. So in this case, it totally looked realistic and the reflection was completely matching. However, let me show you one more example where you might have to make some adjustments. So here we are in example number three. And as you can easily see in this example as well, it's very clearly defined. Edit this and all you have to do, just double click on this. It will open up another document and you have to replace this image. But you will see a difference in this image. We have to make some adjustments to make it match. So let's go to file place embedded and we can replace this image with whatever we like. And I have this image, which I can easily just place it and let's make it a little bigger. This is actually my channel art. So let's make it bigger. 
and save it. Control or Command S. Keep in mind that I have not deleted the previous image. If you want, you can delete that as well. All right, so let's go back to this one. And as you can see, it's not as much matching. It's looking very vibrant. So what we can do, we can come back to this one and add a curves adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose curves. And we have to make the extremely black areas a little bit brighter and extremely bright areas a little bit darker and make the image a little faded. So we'll make the extremely dark areas a little brighter and bright areas a little darker and see if that's matching. All right, now save it, Control or Command S and then come back to this, it will automatically update. See, it's more faded now and if we zoom in, have a look, it looks much more realistic with all those reflections and a little bit faded image. So sometimes you might have to make tiny adjustments with color or luminosity to make the image match with that of the mockup. Back in Photoshop, here we are in example number four and have a look at the mockup. It is difficult to find out where to place the design and some mockups will be like that. In that case, all you have to do, just find out where to place it by figuring out where the smart object is. Somewhere it will be there and that's why it is a mockup. So open up the groups, search for that smart object, which says edit it or design here or anything like that. So as you can see, there's a group over there. We have to open up this group and see where this is. It's actually marked with red. See, the person who made this marked this with red and still you cannot see where to replace it. So just open this group again. See your work. So sometimes it's going to be difficult, but just open up the groups and there will be some kind of indication for you to find out what to do. So just when you spot a smart object, just double click on it and I'm going to replace it with my brand. So just turn it off and file place embedded. I actually have a t-shirt design. So let's place it, hit enter. Now save it and go back and see how that looks. Control or command S. All right, let it update in this one. It's not looking great. We have to make it smaller and we have to bring it to the top. All right, so let's make it a little smaller. Control or Command T. Let's make it smaller like that and bring it to the top. Enter, Control or Command S. Now let's come back to this one and have a look at it. Looks perfect, doesn't it? So sometimes, as I said, you have to just open up the groups and see where the indication is. Find out the smart object double click on it and do whatever you want maybe add text or replace the image time to move to our last example and in this example we're going to be talking about maintaining the type of the design or the graphic that comes with the mock-up make sense let me make it sense for you and the best way to make sense is to show you the example all right so some mock-ups come with the watermark of the creator so have a look designed by free pick right so you can actually turn it off some allow you to do that it's on a separate layer or we can leave it on. I'm going to leave it on because I want to give them the credit. Awesome people. All right. So let's zoom in and have a look at the embossed logo. If you want to replace it, double click here, your logo here, it shows you double click here. And if you have a look at it, it's a graphic, which is completely black. So you have to maintain that criteria. There is no other color, not even white. There's just black and a transparent background. So I'm going to go ahead and import my logo over here. So let's turn this off. File, place embedded. I have my logo probably inside of source. All right. So this also has white and that's the issue. Let's make it a little smaller. Take it a little up, zoom in, hit enter. How can we just keep the black in this one? It's going to be simple in this case. I'm going to go to select color range and then choose shadows, which means the dark colors and then simply bring all of them to zero and increase the range gradually. And as you can see, all of it is now selected. You can also increase the fuzziness a little bit unless you see a perfect selection. So this is perfect. Hit OK. And now we have a selection of the black areas. Now, instead of deleting the white areas, we will create a brand new layer with just the black. So let's click on the adjustment layer icon and choose solid color with the selection active and choose black, hit OK and just delete it. So this already has a mask with that of the logo. You don't have to do anything else. If you want, you can also write over here and make sure you maintain the criteria of black. 
fix imperfect and double click on the T to select all of it and then choose the color which is black in this case and let's make it a little bigger control or command T and make it big okay so zoom out and make it even bigger place it over here all right now let's make it thicker double click on the T again and let's make it extra bold all right now if you want to center it make a selection of the complete canvas press ctrl or command a with the move tool selected you have these alignment options so align it vertically simple if you also want to align this one select the mask align it vertically it's already aligned press ctrl or command d to let go of the marching ants save it ctrl or command s and as you can see you have the embossed logo by the way, if you wanted the embossed to be completely opposite, or in other words, if you wanted the P to be embossed and the I to be embossed instead of the other black areas, you can also do that. Come back to this one, delete it, right? And open up the logo again. So file, place embedded, and choose the logo, place it, and let's make a selection of this. First of all, let's make it a little smaller, arrange it at the top, hit enter, and then select color range, and this time, since we want to make a selection of the bright areas, we will choose highlights, okay? This is fine, this looks fine. You can increase the range if you want to. You can increase the fuzziness. And once you see a good selection, you can just hit okay, and then create a solid color adjustment layer. And it has to be black. Doesn't mean that if it's white, it has to be white. It has to be black. Choose black, hit okay, and delete it, or simply turn that off in case you change your mind. Control or Command S. And let's come back to this and have a look. So that's how to play with mockups and customize them in Photoshop. It's super simple to do. Just look for that smart object, double click on the thumbnail and modify it the way you want. Now here's a question. Why do we need mockups? I have three reasons. There might be more. Number one, it allows you to see it before you make it official. For example, have you seen those t-shirt websites like Vistaprint or Teespring, which allow you to customize your t-shirt and buy them? maybe place your own logo or maybe your own picture, right? So what do they use? They use mockups. They have the t-shirt, they have the space in between where you can place your design. That's exactly what a mockup does. There's a difference that they don't use Photoshop, but it's the same thing. It's a web version of mockup Photoshop, right? And also maybe you wanna create a mockup for your social media page. Maybe you wanna redesign your Facebook page. And you don't want to have the hassle of changing your Facebook page cover photo and notifying all your followers or friends all the time. So you can just play with how the cover will look, how your profile picture will look, how your maybe you, how your post will look. And then after you finalize it in a mock-up or in other words, a template, then you can make it official and post it in your social media. Reason number two, just for fun, maybe you want to see yourself in a billboard, then you can just download a mock-up with a billboard and place your image there, maybe just to amaze your friends. Reason number three is super important, and that is for learning. So let me show you something interesting. So here we are back in example number four, and we can actually study how this mock-up was prepared. So let's open up the group and let's have a look at it. At the bottom, we have the shadow. So we can see how the shadow was made. So it was a simple brush up. Then we have the body. See that color was applied. How was that applied? We can open that up and have a look. So change color one, two, three, four, and all of them are hue saturation adjustment layers with masks in different areas. So you can study the values, how each of them were applied. See colorize is checked. So you can just work your way through it and see how each of them is applied. So let's go to effects. In effects, nothing has been done. It's the same t-shirt. However, the blend mode of the group was changed to soft light. So really good resource to understand how this all works. So you can download your mockups for free and study them. Isn't that a great resource? And that's pretty much it for this video. Hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like and also do not forget to subscribe and not just subscribe ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss a thing and also before i go if you want to learn how to create these mock-ups let me know down in the comments below thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating